How's it going you guys? So I wanted to make a really quick video on Emacs targeted to those of you guys coming from Vim. The big motivating factor for this video was the fact that something I've heard time and time again is the idea that if you are coming from Vim and you want to learn Emacs that you have to start with some Emacs distro. Due to a lot of publicity, the most common one used nowadays seems to be Doom Emacs. Now I think the general concept of Emacs distros is actually pretty interesting in the concept of being able to show off just how powerful Emacs can be. And while I think there are actually some people who use these distros just to kind of simplify their config, something I do realize is that a lot of people kind of just seem to use them as a crutch. As a result, a lot of people end up just moving away from Emacs because honestly, the biggest draw to Emacs is just how extensible and flexible its tooling can be. If your entire setup is just relying on a specific distribution of Emacs packages just to make things work, then you kind of lose out a lot of the configuration and it tends to make things a bit harder to understand just what's going on. I've seen this confusion happen in a lot of videos from people making Doom Emacs videos where they seem to not understand the line between Doom Emacs and Emacs. So I decided to make this video as a really quick introduction for Vim users coming to Emacs and end up giving you guys a pretty minimal configuration where you guys can take advantage of the Vim bindings within Emacs as well as get comfortable with how the configuration works and work on your own from there. Now what this won't give you is an entire Doom Emacs setup from the ground up. The big reason that I'm making this video is to get you guys to learn this stuff on your own. However, this will give you VI or Vim key bindings in both Emacs's editor experience as well as multiple of its other programs that you may want to use. In theory, if you guys have a fairly decent understanding of Vim, then this should be a good starting point. And this is the sort of starting point that I set myself up with when I first started getting into Emacs. I am expecting you to have a pretty surface level understanding of Vim. Assuming that you're going to try out Doom Emacs or any of the other Emacs distributions, this is probably what you already have anyways. If you look down in the description, you'll notice that I've actually linked to a GitHub gist. I'll have two down there. The first one will be using something called use package, which will kind of simplify your config and you'll probably see most people using it. And another one will be without using use package, which will be pretty identical. Um, I'll be showing off the use package version just because I think it's a bit easier for people to read and probably chances are that people are going to be seeing use package used out in the future so I think it's important that I show it off. If you don't know what I'm talking about it's probably easiest to just go with the first option and if it confuses you and you have issues you can look at the second option. If you have any problems at all just message me on discord I'd be happy to help. Alright, so looking down in the description, you'll actually notice that I've given a quick little config and you'll actually see that it is relatively simple. If you actually go ahead and look through, you'll see that the entire thing is only like 40 lines. There's not much to it. In fact, when it comes to third party packages, you're really only installing four. So there's these three and then use package. This little thing right here is another one. Don't worry about this. I'll explain it a bit more. I just figured I'd give you guys a little sneak peek before we actually open it up and I can give you guys a quick little run around and show you how things work. If you look down in the description, you'll see that I've given a quick little command that you guys can run that will basically pull down the actual configuration and set it up for Emacs. Um, in addition to that, you guys can actually just copy it yourself if you wanted to. So really quickly, all you'd have to do to do that is just copy it um, from whatever it is. So dot, dot, dot for just wherever it is. And then you'd want to copy that to your home directory slash dot Emacs dot D slash init dot EL. Right, so this is where you'd want to put it. Now, instead of copying it or running the actual command, you guys can also just go ahead and use emacs-q-l and then the path to the init file. So for me, this is the location of it. And if I just hit enter, it will kind of set up Emacs with a VI or Vim key binding set up. So if I hit H, J, K, and L, they'll move me around as expected. So I've just gone ahead and made the font a bit bigger. You guys can actually do this just by doing control X minus, control X, control plus, um, and you can kind of play with that however you'd like, but that's not really the point of this. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that init file. So now if I did control X, control F, this will give me this little prompt down here. I can do dot Emacs dot d slash init dot el and that will take me to my init file now i'm just going to go ahead and change that for myself because this is my actual system init file which is not what we're looking for so i'm just going to go ahead and do plus evil init dot el all right and this is the actual init file so let's just make that a bit bigger all right so now we're just going to go ahead and break this down so you guys can kind of get an idea of how things are working i'm assuming that you guys are pretty comfortable moving around in vim so this really shouldn't need any explanation for the most part 
So first off, we have this section right here, and this is basically setting up what you can think of as repositories for plugins. Instead of using GitHub or anything like that, it actually has its own uh, repositories for packages that you'll see all the time in Emacs. Uh, most people use Melpa for most things. I'm actually not too sure if this is actually even used for anything anymore, because I feel like most of the time it's not really needed to be updated, but uh, I just have it there just in case uh, somebody else is gonna need it and it might just be a pain to set up anyways. Now, before we go too much further, I kind of want to just give you guys a good understanding of how Lisp works. Um, so Emacs is configured in Emacs Lisp, in case you guys didn't know. Um, it's kind of like the Emacs equivalent to VimScript. Don't worry, it's a lot nicer to work with than VimScript, I find. The uh, general format is pretty straightforward. So if you've ever used a normal programming language that isn't a Lisp, format is usually a function, and then argument, and then a comma, and then an argument. In Lisps, that's not really the case. Instead, you follow a format closer to something like this. So you can kind of think of it this way. So instead of actually having the function on the outside, it is on the inside of the parentheses. And then every argument, no matter how many there are, it will always be on the inside. Now, there's no need for commas, so that kind of saves you an extra button press, which is kind of nice. But the nice thing about it is that with uh, Lisps, it's pretty much consistent. This is going to be the format for basically everything. So in this case, set Q is kind of like the same thing as saying equals. So instead, we could actually just do this. So in most other languages, this would be the same. Now, in Lisp, it is not white space. Uh, it does not use white space, so lines are not super important. So you can kind of use white space however you feel and break things up into different lines as long as you follow the parentheses formatting. Now, we don't use equals since everything is done with this same sort of formatting. We use set Q um, as you guys would have seen before. All right, so hopefully that gives you guys a quick, pretty quick understanding. Uh, we'll go into this a bit further as we go. And that's one of the beauties of Lisp is that honestly, once you can wrap your head around that and you learn what the functions are doing, then really everything else is pretty straightforward. There's not too much else you have to learn. So here package initialize is basically just saying uh, run the function package initialize with no arguments. This will just set up our package management um, using these package archives. Now here I'm saying set Q use package always ensure is T. Now set Q, like we said before, is the same thing as saying equals. And here T, you can think of it the same as true. There are basically two options for true and false. There's T or basically anything that isn't nil. Nil is false and everything else is true. So that means that just the string hello, this is considered true and this is considered false. You'll see that as we go. Often you'll see something like setting this to non-nil will do something. So that's kind of important to know. Now here you'll see this section right here. This is basically saying if use package is not installed, then refresh the repositories and install it. Pretty straightforward. And then yeah, this is just basically saying to require use package for the rest of the configuration. Now we get into use package. This is gonna be something that some people love or hate. The main reason that I used use package for this is because most people and in most repositories will tell you to use use package just because it's the most common thing that people are using. The idea behind use package is that it's a way to simplify how your config looks. So instead of saying every single detail, it kind of simplifies things using certain keywords. So here, this actually doesn't need any keywords, and this is just installing a package called undo foo. Now, there are other packages that we'll look at here, and the first one of interest is evil. Now, evil, like I said before, is the Vim emulation for Emacs. So this is basically what's allowing us to use HJKL, GG, Control O, all that sort of stuff. Now, let's just go ahead and isolate that, and we'll see that I'm doing a bunch of different stuff. I'm saying demand, saying basically set up evil as soon as we start up, and then I bind escape to keyboard, escape quit. This, uh, this isn't useful for everybody, but I like to be able to just hit escape and get out of certain prompts that might be useful for you. And then we will see a couple sections. Now, often what you'll see most people do with use package is just do everything under config. Um, and that's usually fine, but uh, evil has some stuff that need to be set up before we actually start it. So this is just setting a couple minor settings. It's setting up our undo to work properly. And it's setting some specific key binding stuff that really isn't very important if you don't know what's going on. And then here we basically say config. And config will basically be everything that happens after our package is loaded. And then here we're just saying set evil mode to one. So this is running a function called evil mode and giving it the argument one. This just means enable evil mode 
Um, if you run it with nil, I'm pretty sure it will always disable. Anyways, the only reason I used one here was just because that's what they tell you to do. Um, not really anything too crazy about it. You could actually do it without any argument and it should work just fine. Now, Evil Collection, this is actually basically what will replace uh, Doom Emacs, basically. So instead of having Doom Emacs to set up Evil Mode um, in everything and have everything we use Vim bindings, Evil Collection is basically the solution to that without having to install Doom Emacs itself. And so it allows you to use a base Emacs setup and have Evil bindings everywhere. Now, this is just the general setup. It basically says after Evil is set up, then go ahead and set up the Evil integration and enable evil collection. So pretty straightforward, there's not too much to here. Now what I wanted to show off was how you guys can actually expand upon this yourselves. So if you guys wanna expand upon this yourselves, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is run a command. So you can use meta X, and this is also known as alt X, to get into this little prompt down here. And down here, you can actually run different commands. So if I just hit tab, it will give me this huge list of commands, which is probably not really what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and do meta X, and what you're gonna do is list dash packages and hit enter you can hit tab to uh, get some completion and there we go so now we've got this nice little listing now let's go ahead and install a theme because that's probably the most common thing that people like to install what's a what's the one that everybody always uses there's a groove box groove box theme and so if I just hit enter, it'll give me an option to go ahead and install it. Now I can actually hit enter, but in this case, we're going to set this up for our config. So if we just go ahead and open up our config, so just doing control X, control F, and we can open it up. Now we'll see that the package is called Groovebox theme. So we can actually go ahead and do this ourselves. So we can go ahead and copy this use package and we're going to go over to here and we're going to do groove box theme and then I can just go ahead and cut that part out. Configuration. The only configuration you need for uh, loading a theme, you guys could probably look this up on your own, but uh, we'll go ahead and show it off here, is just load theme and then a single quote and then the name of the theme, which I'm pretty sure would just be groove box or grove box. I don't know. Some people say it differently. We've gone ahead and done this. Now, if we want to try and run it, we can do control X, control E on the last parentheses and it should there we go we can see down here it's saying a bunch of stuff it's giving us this little prompt saying do you want to set up this theme i'll just hit yes or why and it will give us a nice little setup right here so now we've got a pretty simple groove box theme nothing too crazy i'm sure a lot of you guys like this sort of stuff so there we go there's a base little setup of how you guys can expand upon this in fact you could even do package install and then hit enter and then you'll actually be able to just type out the package itself and you can kind of play around with setting up packages on their own so let's go ahead and do vertico we're going to do vertico is the name of the package and we're just going to hit enter now this will install the package but since it is not in our actual configuration if we restarted emacs it won't automatically set anything up for us now, since we've installed a package called Vertico, we can actually set up a mode for it. Now, there's a bunch of different packages that have their own modes. Obviously, a theme doesn't really have its own mode, but say, for example, Evil. So the thing that's giving us HJKNL, it has its own Evil mode. So right here, we're saying Evil mode, and we're basically saying enable that mode or that feature. Now, Vertico is another one. So since we've just installed that, we can actually do meta x vert, and then just hit tab, mode. So Vertico mode, and hit enter. And this will enable something called Vertico. Now this will give us a nicer interface for completion. We can do meta X and it will give us this nice little pop-up. And then say if we did package install, it'll give us all these nice little options, Vertico, all that sort of stuff. So that will give you a nice little completion, kind of similar to the wild menu if you guys are used to Vim. Now something I wanted to point out was this stuff that we're doing down here. Now I wanted you guys to go ahead and look at this section right here. So here we're saying load theme and we're giving it the name of the theme. Now, instead of doing that with our actual configuration right here, we could actually do that manually. So if I did meta X and we get this nice little pop up from before, just from Vertico, we can do load and you'll see this option load theme. Now, if I select that, it will give us a bunch of theme options and I could do groove box and it will give us all these different options. So let's do dark hard, I guess this time and hit Y to say yes. And now we get groove box settings enabled just like that. Now, basically what we're saying here is we're saying this first function, this is actually being run by meta X. So we're saying first time when we do meta X and we give it a um, something to run, this is actually a function. And then what we're giving it next is the argument. So just like before, load theme is the function and then groove box is the argument. 
and it will load the Groovebox theme. Pretty neat. And so you'll see this all over the place. So here's another example. So evil, col yeah, evil collection in it. So this one is another function that we can run. Um, is there anything else here that we have set up? Uh, well, let's all the stuff that we have right now. We could do a package install. And then there we're doing a use package. You guys kind of see the idea here. So hopefully this is getting through to you guys and you guys kind of get the idea of what is going on here. And you guys can go ahead and start configuring this stuff on your own. You can also add some extra key bindings. I'm not really going to go into all of the different configuration that you guys can do, but I recommend looking at the use package documentation on the website, as well as just asking around, ask on my discord, ask for help. I don't really want to go over everything that you guys can do. If you guys want to learn what something's doing, so say for example, you want to know what a key does, you can do control H K and this will prompt you to type a key. So let's go ahead and hit F. Now this will give us some documentation on what the F key does. Now we could do control H F and this will actually prompt us for functions. So say for example, we wanted to see what load dash theme was actually doing. Then we get some nice documentation right here explaining load theme. Alternatively, if you guys don't want to actually use which key, you can do control so say for example, if I did control X and I wanted to know what options are available to me, then I can hit control H. So control X, control H. This will give us this documentation instead of having to use which key to see all of it. This can be super helpful. Gives you a nice little breakdown for everything. In addition, you can also do uh, control H M and this will give you information on your current modes. So for example, here there's not really too much of importance, but you'll see that say for example, we have this key set up, a bunch of other stuff. So it's uh, pretty useful and you can use control H to basically find everything. In fact, if you wanted to look at the documentation for Emacs, it is actually right inside of Emacs. You just do control H I and this will actually take you to the info page for it. Info is basically the same sort of idea as a man page. Anyways, guys, I hope this video didn't scare you away from Emacs too much. I just wanted to give you guys a pretty quick and simple introduction for those of you guys that are a bit more comfortable configuring your text editor. Once again, I just wanted to give a really quick shout out to my supporters on GitHub Sponsors. I just wanted to thank Platinus, Carr, and Tall Guy Jenks. If you guys want to support me on GitHub Sponsors, I'll have a link down in the description. Anyways, guys, if you guys found this video useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know down in the comments or ask me on Discord. And if you guys are new to Emacs, let me know what you're thinking of it down in the comments, as well as if you guys prefer to use a distribution, that's totally fine. While I kind of think this is a better starting point for the long run, I do think that there is a lot of benefit to using a distro for certain people. In fact, lots of people seem to get quite good mileage out of just using uh, Doom Emacs. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.